Hello there and welcome to part one of this beautiful little Jack Russell tutorial um, using Faber-Castell Polychromos and um, one luminance on a um, hot press watercolour paper, Fabriano um, Artistico hot press water paper. The reference image uh, for the picture is from Pixabay and I will link that into the description. Um, for each part of the tutorial I've gone back to or try to go back to basics as far as possible um, explaining a little bit about the color process explaining my choice of colors uh, explaining my thoughts as I um, go along I explain uh, the methods and the the actual strokes that I'm using on the uh, throughout the tutorial as I go along so if you're new to colored pencil you can still um, join in and have a go if you if you want to I'll link the other parts of the tutorial if you uh, want to find the other ones and um, have a go and join in. And if you uh, would like to have a go, I'll also link the um, the line drawing in the um, description as well. So you can find the line drawing and then join in. So I hope you uh, enjoy the tutorial and let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do, which is how I always start my um, drawings, is to take my kneadable eraser. This is a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. And um, I'm just going to start to dab out some of the lines, just to take a little bit of the graphite um, off. I'll keep folding my needable eraser over so that I don't put the the dirty part back down onto the paper and just dabbing it off I'm not completely taking it off so you can see that I can still see the lines underneath but I just want to take it back a little bit um, I just feel that that helps with trying to prevent it from smudging as I'm going along I'm going to try and keep this workshop, I'm just looking at the clock, I'm going to try and keep this part, I mean it is going to take a, a number of parts, um, I'm not quite sure how many parts yet until we've completely done it, but I'm going to try and keep the parts to about an hour at a time because it just, um, hopefully that's just a, you know, a fairly manageable part that we can have a look at. And I'm just gently patting out the eye, uh, the eye area there. Okay, so that that's fine. We've just taken a little bit of the um, the pencil out, taking a bit of the pencil out. So hopefully I won't smudge it. I have got a little piece of paper. Um, this is a little bit of glassine paper, um, but any paper that you want to put down to protect the. Uh, Fabriano, the Artistico, from your the hand, um, the oils on your hand. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dark sepia pencil, my dark sepia polychromos pencil uh, from Faber-Castell, and I'm just going to start, I'm going to cover over the area that I want to keep clean, and I've got my reference picture on my phone at the side of me and with a sharp pencil I'm just going to start to outline the dark areas of the eye using small strokes, light strokes, not pressing down, trying to, and I'm not even really touching the uh, tip of the pencil. I'm hardly taking any pigment off the the pencil. And there's a, a little line that goes up there. And just in, I mean, actually enlarging it as I'm drawing with one hand, I'm holding the phone um, to enlarge it a little bit on the other hand. And then my, my children keep showing me 
and my husband keeps showing me how I can enlarge it and hold it um, hold the image on my phone in large but I, I can never work it out when it comes to trying to work it back out myself I can get it so so sort of enlarged and so fine and then it won't go anymore so so I'm just holding the one side and that's going to be quite dark in there so where I know it's dark I can put the, the dark line and I know that I'm not going to need to sort of go back in um, to that area so that's in there and it's worth it is worth taking time and not rushing this stage this this part particularly around the eye because um, if well, for me if I can get the eye right or as as good as I feel that I can get it then that means, for me, I feel that the rest of the portrait is going to come, uh, is, is, is going to end up being right. If I make a mistake here, um, it's just going to, for me, it's going to show up like a sore thumb. And I, I won't be happy with it. So I just take extra time at this stage. I'm not in any rush to make sure that this stage is uh, something that I'm happy with. Um, and that I'm actually, even though the line drawing's down, I'm still really observing the the photograph, the reference image, to make sure that I'm drawing it as accurately as I can. Uh, and this this goes up here. And by keeping my lines uh, small and light, um, if I have started to go wrong, it can fairly easily be corrected at this stage. So that's actually going to be the, sh the uh, reflection that comes around there. And I'm just putting the suggestion in that this, this, there's going to be some eyelashes in here but if I just put the suggestion in at this stage I know that's where the end's going to stop okay and we're going to have a little bit of darker area that comes out here. And that's about all I'm going to do at the minute. I'm not going to put some... I know this, this pupil here is going to be quite dark, but I don't want to just go straight in with a solid colour there. I want to start building colours in the middle to create the dark area and that's going to hopefully give me the the interest and help me build this um, glassy shiny eye that's in there so I think that's probably about all that I want to do at the minute I just wanted to outline the the outside of it okay so I'm going to leave it like that for the minute and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about base layers that are going to go down in this eye. I'm going to work on this eye uh, first, the eyeball, and start to create some, um, hopefully, some, some nice layers in there. And I'm just going to go back in with my kneadable eraser and dab these little lines that are in the middle. And sometimes um, the needle eraser is, is, I find it brilliant for what I call sort of knocking back the line. So by that I mean, I don't know if you can see that on the, the video, but the lines are still there. So I'm taking out quite a bit of the pigment, but by knocking it back, I'm just 
um, I'm not completely erasing it. If I wanted to completely erasing it, that to erase it, that's where I would go to the um, the Tombow uh, Mono Zero, and that's brilliant on the um, Fabiano Artistico at actually removing the line, um, and I won't see any of the the graphite left. The one thing I do need to remember is um, if I am going to have a lighter colour over the top. Or if I'm going to have a lighter colour down somewhere, I want to make sure these lines are pretty much gone, as as gone as as much as I can get them. Because if I put coloured pencil over the top of pencil, the graphite pencil, it's pretty much impossible then to try and lift out. It's very hard anyway to try and um, lift it out. It would depend on sort of how much pigment I put down. This area around here where I've just gone around with the dark sepia, because the dark sepia is such a dark colour, I didn't need to worry too much about those pencil lines coming out. But in the middle here, I really do need to make sure that they are pretty much non-existent in there. So I'm just kneading my eraser into a tiny uh, little point on the end and dabbing it off. Um, and that's pretty much gone actually. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it is pretty much, pretty much gone. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take an ivory pencil and working down the bottom where the iris is going to be, I'm just going to start to put a base of the ivory pencil. So I'm still using um, small strokes, still not pressing on hard. I'm holding my pencil on the tip just because I need to keep control of it really because I'm working in a, a small area because this in the mid, I mean it wouldn't matter if I did put the uh, ivory in there but this, this in here is going to be the pupil obviously so I don't need it to go in there. So even though I'm holding my pencil quite close to the edge, I'm not pressing on hard. I'm just putting down a nice, a good layer of the ivory pencil. And that's going to create the, the iris for me. You can see that when I'm colouring in um, the eye, when I'm putting the colour down on the eye, um, because the eyeball because this is sort of like a three-quarter view the eyeball is actually sort of coming around like this um, it's not just a circle it's coming around like this so all my strokes are going to follow those lines you'll see hopefully as it'll make sense as we go on but my strokes I'm not just coloring across um, I'm not coloring round I'm following the direction of the eyeball and the eyeball is actually going to come um, around like this Okay, so that's just a nice little bit of base down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a warm grey one and I'm going to start to put some grey, again not pressing hard, into this area which is going to become the reflection, the little reflection that's in the eye. So I'm using the base layers to plot the areas, uh, some people call it, plot. I call it plotting, I think I call it plotting actually, sometimes you don't know what word you say, but I think I call it plotting, some people call it mapping, um, I, for me I just say that I'm going to plot the areas in, so that's what I'm doing with when I put the base layers in. There's several reasons as to why I use the base layers and I'll, I'll go through those or at least some of those reasons you know as we go along but um, yeah that I find that they're quite important for the um, for using on the Artistico and whilst I'm here actually I'm just going to start to uh, put in a little bit of grey there for the pupil as well and that's coming down there and we're starting to starting to work that in 
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take a, a dark indigo. Now, I don't know if you can see from the reference picture, but the pupil um, that we're going to put in here now, and you can see that I'm sort of going round uh, the way that the eyeball is going to look because the eye is obviously looking out. Um, the, the pupil... I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see it from the reference photo that's on the side of the screen. And if you can't, when you actually go to Pixabay and pull the picture up larger, you will see it. The, the pupil is, um, it's not a black, it's, it's dark, but it's not a real sort of black, black. It's got quite a lot of grey in it. It's got quite a lot of tones in it, actually. So I don't just want to go straight in with black because I don't want that pupil to look flat. I want it to have all of these colours that um, will make up the reflections and the glossiness of the, the eye. So I'm just going to put a little bit of dark indigo to create the blue tint that I want, the blue hue that I want under the, what will become the, the, the dark iris. Okay. Okay, so I think that's okay for the minute. Just want to now take, go back to my sepia. I'm not going to go in with black just yet, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go black, back to my sepia and start filling in a little bit more. Actually, no, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... a terracotta this is uh, still using the polychromos range i'm going to take a terracotta and i'm just going to put a little bit of this terracotta which is a sort of an orangey brownie color i'm just going to put a little bit of it down here at the bottom of the eyeball And that's going to help me keep a nice, bright or brighter iris. Put a bit up here as well because there's actually a bit of the the brown and the iris sort of colour going up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. And then I'm going to go in with the dark sepia and just start to bring some of this colour, again very very small light strokes, bring some of this colour into this iris. And just sort of paying attention to this does actually get a little bit dark down here a bit darker bring that color in there start to bring the color up from the bottom it's this darker color on the bottom of the eye the eyeball here which will create the uh, the dimension of the eye and make it look 3D and make it look domed and um, it's the the light and the darks are going to create the the form of the eye. So I'm just putting a little bit of the dark in there whilst I've got it because I can see that that's going to be um, in there and there's actually dark bit in the reflection about there okay yeah and whilst I've got the dark soup in my hand I'm just going to start to put a little bit into this pupil here as well because obviously I don't want the pupil to be blue I just want that blue to give a tiny little bit of hue when it goes under the the dark sepia and the brown. 
and we have got a little bit of um, interest in the shadow, uh, sorry, the reflection there. It looks like a row of trees actually that's from the reflection if he's, the dog's outside. We can neaten that up and tidy that up and add that. I'm just putting the divider line in really so that I don't forget that I need to keep that divider in and um, don't go over it with another colour. It just helps me by putting the line in. There, so we've darkened down the pupil a little bit. The pupil will go darker. Let me get a burnt sienna now. I want the burnt sienna to bring in to this iris. I'm going to take the burnt sienna up there. I know that that's going to be covered up. That's going to go darker up there. By taking the burnt sienna up there, I can just it just helps me to blend at a later date. And I'm keeping all of my strokes pretty much, you know, that sort of uh, direction. So I'm getting a good uh, colour of the burnt sienna down but I'm not pressing hard on every layer, I'm just going over it uh, a little bit at a time to uh, build the layers up. I'm just going to take a little bit of the, I need to sharpen that actually, let's just sharpen this, uh, the burn on there. And just start to think about blending down the side where it's going to go a bit darker. Still not pressing hard. I'm thinking about some darker areas down here. Remember, my pencil's just broken, um, but you can see that I've still got I've still got some um, uh, fine edges, some sharp edges. So I'm just going to turn my pencil around and I'm going to just use those. I don't need to resharpen it. Not not for this. And just blending that darker colour. So say if we keep the darker colour towards the outside, that will start to create the, the roundness of the eye and start to create the, the eyeball. So in the, um, the reflection, I'm just going to put a little bit of ultramarine. I'm just going to put a little bit, you can probably see that there is some blue, it is obviously the reflection of the sky there, I think they are trees um, that are in there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the blue, the ultramarine, which might look quite dark at this stage but when we tone it down uh, sort of desaturate the colour a little bit with um, some of the lighter colours um, in the future, uh, it'll work. Okay, so we're just creating a little bit of reflection in that, or a bit of blue in that reflection. And I'm going to go back in with the dark sepia and start to, this is quite dark that's coming down the side of this reflection here. Um, uh, but I'm going to start to bring that colour, bring that colour down. Uh, 
around the side and just sharpen those lines a little bit and just put the um, the dark sepia right down at the bottom this is where the eyelid would join the eyeball and I, I always do that actually I always make sure I've got a little uh, sort of hard um, not necessarily a hard line but certainly a, a, a dark line down at the bottom and that just I find pushes the eyeball below the eyelid and that helps with that this is actually uh, going to come around up here this this eye actually goes much darker but before I um, take my dark sepia too far out this this is going to be quite a darkish area here before I do that I want to start thinking about some base colors and the reason that I want to um, put the base colors down or one of the reasons that I want to put the base color down is because there's a very good chance that I'm going to want to use the slice tool on these little bits at the end and the slice tool I'll explain it I'll show you as we, we get there but the slice tool will only um, take pigment off. So it's like a knife, a ceramic knife, and it will only take pigment off back to the first layer of colour pencil that we put down. So if I've got a nice light base layer, the first layer is the warm grey one or the cold grey one, when I come to use the slice tool, it will take the pigment back off to that warm grey or cold grey one. If I'd got this, so here the the first layer was this dark sepia, the slice tool won't do much on that. It's not going to take anything off at all. It's just going to um, either not work or if I keep going, it'll just scratch the paper and start to damage the paper because it'll just start to scratch the surface of the paper off. But by putting the base layer down, so here I'm going to start to put the cold greys or the warm greys, um, it will have the slice tool, it'll give the slice tool something to work against in um, a later, uh, I'm not sure whether we'll get around to that in this one, but certainly in a later part of the uh, tutorial, we'll be able to see, see it in action and see it work. I'm just, whilst I was just explaining the slice wall, I'm just, working on the shape of this uh, little pupil here actually I'm looking at it and with the reflection it's quite almost like a bit of a triangle shape on this side so I was just just working on that and that is quite dark there okay it's quite dark there okay so let me explain what I mean with the base layers. So I'm going to, this is a cold grey one, because the um, the side of the eye here is quite sort of um, grey, actually I am going to take the, the warm grey, because the side of the eye here is, is um, you can see there's um, lots of little flecks in the the fur so it's quite dark but then it's got some uh, lighter colors I'm gonna I always sort of look for the lightest color that I can find in an area and go towards that for my base layer and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take out these little bits of let's just clean off that take out these little bits of uh, pigment here I don't want those so I'm just going to erase them with the mono tombow and I tend not to brush my crumbs off I tend to just get my kneadable eraser and dab them off and that way hopefully I'm safer and I won't um, smudge anything so with light pressure I can see that the hairs are sort of now working up towards the top of the head as they come out of the eye um, and I'm going to just start to just sort of plot in fill that little bit in whilst I'm there. I could do with sharpening that pencil actually, obviously. Um, I thought I'd sharpened my pencils before I started this, but it obviously got away from me. So I'm just going to put this 
plot this area with little strokes and start to come up over the eye and this is where I'm going to take away some of this um, these lines and you know it's up to you as to how much of this you do or don't put in um, there's quite a lot of lines that I've put in there for me because I just would have to sort of just keep rubbing them out but it's fine we can do that that's fine let me just put this back in with the pencil so that I'm not going to lose my way there and by putting some of the outer edges in actually this uh, this eye will start to make a bit more sense actually because we're sort of putting the eyeball into context so here this is where you've got a little bit of an eyelid and I can see that it's got more of a bluey tone than a browny tone to the highlights to the tiny little flecks so I'm just going to fill that in with a cold grey and under here and this isn't a massive piece actually the piece of paper I'm working on is about uh, it's about A4 and so the portrait's not huge but I just thought hopefully it might be quite manageable so that we don't have to uh, go into many many parts we can get it done in just a few parts and so I'm just putting the eye into a little bit of context this um, this little uh, line here, I'm going to fill that in just to put a bit of uh, layer into that, and actually put a little bit of the cold grey in there as well as the warm the warm grey because I can see both colours in there actually. Um, really start to give me something to work this eye um, out towards in a minute, just to sort of work around here. Um, what I want to do is to grab, let's have a look, I think we'll grab a cold, a cold grey and just start to bring out some of this. This um, edge of the eyeball in the direction that the the fur's going. I'm not pressing on hard, I'm just starting to bring, drag the colour out from the edge, from the edge of the eye and just help me to start create some dimension. And it obviously comes down here and there's a little bit in there. we can sort out. Let's give this a sharpen. And just bring this around here because this is going to be the the eyelid and fill that, that in there so I'm actually still plotting I'm still at the plotting stage I'm just sort of with the slightly darker colour because I've got my base layer down I'm just plotting around the outside of the eye to create the the eyelid and of the, the darker areas around the outside 
and I can start to just put that in there too, that little bit there. And this is obviously going to go darker as well. I'm trying to play, pay close attention to the direction of the fur. So for instance, here we're going out sort of towards the um, the ear. And this is one reason that I did leave these lines in because it is actually showing us the, the way the fur's um, going. So at this point up here, we're working out towards the ear. As we start to come down, the, the, um, the fur is starting to come down. Um, it's coming around around the eye and just starting to go over the bone structure of of the dog. Okay, so that will do at the minute to just put some uh, context, just put a little bit of context into the eye so we can sort of see um, what we're doing and where we're going. Okay, so I'm going to take the ivory pencil again. And I'm just going to start to put a little bit of ivory, I'm still not pressing hard, onto this iris to just blend out that um, the iris a little bit. And I'm going to take the warm grey to just blend that lighter area fill that lighter area in blend that blue and just blend it into the corner for the reflection and then I'm going to take a black now quite a sharp black and I'm going to start to think about the um, the shadows that are in this uh, reflection so it does actually come up uh, up here if you can hopefully see that into the the trees that are there it's it's a very it is a small eye like I say the whole uh, piece of paper is uh, is about a four so this isn't a massive um, piece therefore the the eye area is not going to be massive and then we're not going to be able to get all of the detail in it's just not going to be possible but we're going to try and get some of the detail in little bits that we can um, get in and then just drag that black. down and there's a bit that goes across there quite a dark bit and with the warm grey one I'm just going to take the warm grey one and just blend out this little bit of the, the darker area to start to create um, a bit of the, the glassiness And back in with the, the sepia. Just keep that nice and intensified. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'm using my dark sepia. And just to bring this down again. This is really quite dark here. Um,
and just blend that out on that side because that's a little bit sort of um, I want it blended between the sepia and the um, the darker area and just making sure it's dark at the bottom And then with my um, black, I'm just going to go up and start to think about, so I know we've got a, a shadow there, or a reflection. And start to put some of these uh, sort of reflections of the hairs the eyelashes and that is going to be quite sort of dark in there and then it does go to quite a, a darkish cold grey so I'm going to go into as uh, a cold grey 5 that I've got in the corner around here as well that eye carries on that's a little bit of an eyelash there let's just split that off from underneath I don't want that to join up so we'll, we'll make it go to the side like that I don't want it to join up And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white, polychromous white. Now the polychromous white itself is, um, it's a very translucent white. It's very good for adding um, on top of eyes or anything where you want a nice shiny gloss actually. So uh, for adding this these sort of white areas here to or lighten them up I mean you're never going to completely make an area white with the polychromous but it will um, sort of lighten areas and create that sort of uh, glassiness that I want to create on the eye so I'm just going to add it in areas where I can see that the um, there's a glassiness and that should hopefully help with the um, creating the 3D and the shininess and the glossiness. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in with the sepia to just go around the areas that I wanted to darken down again. So I can see that's a bit darker there. This is darker here and there's actually a darker area at the side of that glassiness and this area here is darker so that will I think just about do for the um, the inside of the eye for the minute I'm just going to put a little bit of the um, the burnt ochre into that iris there I might go back to it because I do sort of as I adjust things I do tend to go back to things but for the minute we won't worry too much about that we'll have a look we'll put some context around the the outside of the eye and then we'll we'll have a look we might go back to it I'm just going to darken down the inside bit here 
a tear duct because I can see that that's darker. I've just taken a uh, cold grey five that was and just going to add a little bit of the dark sepia and I don't want I don't want that white bit there so let's just take that out with the cold grey three We will need to come back into this reflection and um, because we've got to still deal with these little eyelash shadows in here but for the minute I think I'm going to just uh, leave that. I can see that that little light bit there is quite dark actually so let's go back in with this little light bit here. It's nowhere near as dark as that on the reference photo so let's darken that down and hopefully straight away that has sort of stopped the eye looking flatter it's made the eye come together and sort of look a bit more um, round so we'll we'll leave that like that for a sec okay I've got a cold grey four and I'm just starting to again still take out this this area here right on the outside of the eye which is going to go into the 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 brown areas but this is quite dark on the outside of the or quite gray on the outside of the eye that's not light either let's, uh, let's take that to where it should be right underneath the eye here is a little bit of Blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just put a little bit of blue along there, just following that curve and that will get blended out in a little bit, that will be blended out. just want to blend that reflection a little bit. Okay. So over the top of the eye, I'm going to um, start to think about this area here, which is effectively the, the hair that's coming over the eyelid. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my... So when I, when I decide, uh, sort of make a decision on which base colour to start with I have a look at the area and I pick out the lightest bit of colour that I can see now that might just be a couple of pixels on the photograph but I go to the lightest colour that I can see which here is sort of like um, it is a warm grey um, almost like a creamy colour but I'm going to go with the warm grey rather than, I did think about picking the ivory up, but I didn't want, the ivory would make it sort of quite bright and I didn't want that. I wanted these colours to be quite sort of muted colours. So I've decided to go for the, the warm grey, the warm grey one. And I'm just starting to put down some colour. On the eyelid. I'm looking at the way that the um, the fur is going, not pressing on hard, so I can still see at this stage I can see all the grain that's in the paper um, in the paper coming through. But I'm just starting to come down. Over the top of the eye with a nice base layer. I'm not too worried about these pencil lines here. I don't feel that I have to rub everything out. That's going to go quite uh, dark because that sort of goes into a, a very dark blacky browny colour. So I don't need to take out all of these um, pencil lines. Not too worried about that one. It's just, you know, I mean, if in doubt, take it out because, um, you know, the last thing I would want is to put a lighter colour and then think, oh, 
uh, over the top of it and then I, there's nothing I can do with it. But if I'm fairly sure that that's going to go dark, then I don't need to worry too much about that. So from here, what I want to do is I want to start to think about the next colour that I can see. I'm going to work light from from dark. That's the way that um, coloured pencil works on the Artistico um, because it's 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 you can to a certain extent put a little bit of light back over dark, but not a lot. So I've got to I've got to look for the next colour, the next sort of um, level of colour in the area that I'm working. I'm still working on this little bit over the eye and I can see um, I can see sort of like cinnamon and ochre colours. Um, let's put the guess go with the ochre next actually. So I can see some ochre colours. I can see a bit of cinnamon in there as well. And I don't want this ochre to get too bright. So I'm just going to start to bring the colour down this is obviously darker here and I can put a little bit of ochre in there in fact I'm just going to extend this whilst I'm here I'm just going to extend this base layer around here because I don't want to start putting the ochre down unless there's a base layer I can just start to bring the ochre colour around here and that will help me create the form of the eye actually because I can see now how it's sort of going up and over. And it's a bit darker there and it's actually also darker right down towards the eyelid. And this is a bit darker down here. And just to tone that, I am going to just tone that ever so slightly with a little bit of the, um, the cinnamon. Just to tone it a little bit. I'm not putting too much on. Just around here. cold grey and I'm just going to start to actually I'm going to go in with a darker colour than that let's go in with the um, let's go in with the warm grey 6 actually let me just sharpen that pencil because I want it really nice and sharp so that I can start to create some fine little hairs so I'm going to take the um, the uh, what did I say? Warm grey six, warm grey six, and I'm just going to start to bring some little hairs around here. Now these hairs are probably going to get blended in and covered up. This isn't the top sort of the top layer by any means, but it's going to start. I don't need to put all of my sort of um, little bits of colour on the top layer if that makes sense I can start to structure the um, the eyelid for a start which is actually just going to come uh, down here so I'll start to structure that and the eyelid actually sort of curves if it goes that way and this bit then starts to curve over and also up that way. 
This is also the eyelid. That's a little stray hair there, which I'm going to... Sometimes you just have to sort of work with the paper. And if the paper's given you the gift of that little hair there, um, to me that's like a gift because it means I don't have to try and put it in. So I am going to work with the paper um, if I can. If the paper gives me a little something, I'll just work with it. I won't sort of fill that in and then afterwards try and put another stray hair in there. Um, it just doesn't make sense for me to do that. So here I'm just extending this eye out um, because there isn't a real hard edge on the edge of this eye. It's just going to uh, blend out. It's going to be quite soft and it's just going to blend out. To the side of this eye here and it is dark it's dark in there um, let me just add a little bit of detail in there whilst i'm in there okay So I've used these tiny little marks to just define that eyelid. I'm going to go back in with a, a, a cold grey, but one that's not so um, not so dark. So let's go in with a four here. Um, actually, before I do that, you know what? I, like I said, I'm always looking for little highlights, and I can see some highlights there, so I'm actually just going to go in with a warm grey one and fill this area in. Blend that out. And then I can use the change the cold grey actually let's go into a cold grey five um, I mean I keep saying the names of the pencils and the numbers and to be honest it doesn't really matter we're just looking for a darker a darker grey that can start to give me some contrast so if you haven't got the exact pencil that I'm going to mention here or it really really doesn't matter um, if it mattered you know color doesn't really matter um, it's more the contrast the lights the darks they're the bits that matter if color mattered a black and white photograph wouldn't look you know, like a black and white portrait, wouldn't look real. The, you know, the colour doesn't matter. It's the contrast. It's the um, the getting the lights and the darks. That's what's going to create the form and, you know, do the job of creating the 3D um, portrait. And I think, and it, and it was the same for me actually when I first started out with colour pencils, and I'd think, oh, you know, I've got to, um, you know, have a certain colour, and not, you know, I'm going to collect these colours, and yeah, they're great, but no, I don't use all of them now. I just use, you know, I have my favourites. I find that I do tend to go back to uh, the same sorts of colours, depending on what sort of colour animal I'm doing, and. I have my favourites and when I bought the whole set, because I thought I had to have the whole set, um, I don't actually really uh, use many um, of them. That probably has something to do with the fact that, you know, my, my passion is drawing animals and there are only so many colours that are needed for animals really. Um, you know, I don't do uh, sort of tend not to do butterflies and things where I use all uh, reds and whatever but um, 
just a few pencils. Is um, you know all that's needed really, especially to get you get you started. So I've just taken um, a, a warm grey too, and I've just sort of blended that area out a little bit, just to start smoothing it out between the eye and what is going to become the brown up here. Um, just wanted to smooth that out, and just gives me just. Sometimes smoothing areas out just give me a little bit, it gives me a bit of satisfaction. Tiny little treats every now and again, and I, I do love blending. <laughs> so just that little bit of blending just gives me that little treat, and it means that I can um, carry on. Okay, so I'm going to take a sort of a mid-tone warm grey here now. I can see warm grey tones. Um, I'm looking for, I need just some, on a slightly lighter, okay I've got a four, that's it, and I'm just going to start to add, uh, this is, this is going to be quite dark here because this is where he's got his little, um, his little long eyelashes coming out of there, but then what I'm going to do is just to start and put a little bit of the direction of the fur, which is coming down this way into this little portrait here. This is going to be some long hairs coming over the top here and this is going to actually go quite sort of brownie and dark. But whilst we're just working on this area I'm just going to put some little bits coming down this side. And that's not really, we're not really, I'm not really putting the detail in at this stage. I'm just starting to put some tones in because not all of this area is uh, one tone. It's, it's different tones. So this is just helping me build um, just the tones. I'm going to put that darker bit in there whilst that's there. That's that pencil sort of covered up now. And then I'm going to go back in with the warm grey one and just start to blend out this area and those little bits of darker grey will just hopefully blend into um, just little suggestions of, of hairs that are not sat on the top surface if that makes sense. So I build the, the layers up from the sort of bottom upwards so not all of the hairs are obviously sat right on the surface. Some are sat underneath each other. So these little bits here that are creating this uh, little bits of colour, it's just creating what's going to be the sort of the under, under layers of hair. Now what I am going to do now is to start to... Um, bring in some of this this orange in fact actually whilst I'm doing this I like to take my base coat out further than the area that I'm working on and that is because I don't want to have I don't want to have to stop at a hard edge when I'm blending something so I don't want this burnt ochre to go over to an area that hasn't got a base layer down on it um, because it's going to look different, it will look different. I think I've got a piece of paper that I can... No, I can't find one. I was just going to show you on a, a different piece of paper how different it would look if I put it down onto an area which didn't have the base layer underneath it. But it will look different. It will look much brighter. Um, the base layer, this base layer, this choice of colour, it's just sort of muting it down a little bit. So, because I don't want to stop at a harsh edge, I want to take, I always want to take the base layer out further than the area that I'm actually working on. So that will be fine out there for the minute. And then I'm 
going to start to take. Oh, let's just take it up to there actually. That'll do for the minute. And then I'm just going to start to take this ochre because the corner of this eye is actually going to be quite sort of uh, dark. And I'm paying attention to the way that the little hairs are coming around and they are coming around the corner because they're going to come down that way. So I'm going to pay attention to the direction. tiny hairs and I'm just doing little flicks I'm just doing a little flick so I want to flick it because I want the um, if I show you here maybe I want to flick it I want to do little flicks because when you put your pencil down onto the paper you will get a blunt edge so this bit down here where I put my pencil down is going to be blunt as I curve it around I want to curve it I don't want to do straight lines I want to curve it I'm curving it in the way that the fur is actually going and by flicking it off at the end of the little stroke I will get a much um, softer edge. Let me just see if I can grab a, a bit of paper. Let me just put that to one side. Let me just grab a little bit of paper and I will show you with a, I'll show you with a darker, I'll show you with the black actually, that will show up. Let me just put that over that. So what I want to do is, when I put my pencil down on the paper, I've got a blunt edge, you can see there it's quite blunt. So I want to put my pencil down um, sort of on the inside, so on the inside of the eye, or on, towards the eye, and then I want to flick. And by flicking, I've got the blunt edge here and I've got the um, the little flick where my pencil comes off and the pressure gets taken off. So I'm just creating little strokes. Um, and of course, I don't want to just go straight and I certainly don't want to keep the pressure the same all the way along. Or I'm going to end up with him looking like he's got spiky hair. So I want to keep my pencil fairly sharp. And I want to, let's do it over here, I want to just do little flicks and I want them to be curved. And I want perhaps each of them to have slightly different pressure as well. Like you can see there's a darker one there, lighter one there. And I just want to do little uh, sort of little curves really. And that is how I'm going to be able to create the texture on something this small um working like this I, my my little strokes are really probably not much more than that i've got hardly any pressure you can see the pressure it's not even really taking the pigment off the end you know it's not really touching the end of the pencil but i just want my little strokes to be nothing more than that if i want them to become darker I just go over the top again, again with the same pressure. And if I want them to be darker again, I put a third layer down. And darker again, I just put another layer down. And so each time it gets darker and darker, but my pressure hasn't increased at any stage. That's probably what, what I don't know, four or five layers down. And I just keep going. And that, I might be doing that with different colours. I may not be doing that just with the black. But you get the idea. So I'm keeping little tiny uh, strokes. And if I want them darker, they uh, I put more layers down. And actually you can see down here now I'm starting to fill in. So I'm actually starting to create some structure. Because this is darker down here. Where I've obviously put a lot of my pigment before I did my little flick. And then up here, I've got my flicks. I've got my ends of my flicks. And that creates a... Well, you can see, hopefully you can see, it's starting to create some form. Um, sometimes I will work back this way as well. So I'll come this way. 
so on a coat sometimes I might sort of do flicks both ways it just depends where about on the coat I am so you know I, I, we'll go through that another time but for this around the eye I'm working out from the eye and I'm just sort of uh, working around not putting that much pressure um, on the um, the, the actual pencil itself and then when it comes when it comes to the end little bits up here um, the the pencil strokes will again they'll be sort of blunt at the one end where my pencil goes down and they will flick out and if that what if I really wanted these end bits so say up here I'm going to want some real sort of um, very soft edges on the pencil we, we'll go through it again when we actually get there but what I would do is I would put the pencil down and then a kneadable eraser, just push it into sort of a point. And then I would start to just from the outside in, because again, I want the blunt end to be on the outside of my rubber and the flick to be on the inside. Just take the kneadable eraser and flick it in. And then I would start to just sort of um, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just starting to really soften the edge of it. And then I can just, you know, carry on. But we will go through that again when we get to that stage. Uh, but hopefully that just shows you uh, the sort of stroke that I'm using on this piece. Um, and I think the strokes, the only strokes that I'll be using on this piece, really, there might be a there'll be a few more around by the nose actually but it's either that or it's then um blending so again i'm doing it with a black which isn't really going to show up now but the blending is just tiny little uh circular strokes so if i just go to here it's just tiny little circular strokes not putting any pressure on at all because i don't want to see those circular strokes but that's the one of the blending techniques that I'll be using um, on this and that just works the pigment of the um, the pencil from different directions and helps to push the pencil around um, that's already down because obviously that I would be blending with that it pushes the pencil around and it also pushes it into the grain from different directions and that will help to fill the grain pushing it in from different directions so I'm not putting not putting any pressure on at all that's about the extent of my little circle no pressure hardly put an edge it is starting to put a little chisel tip I don't know if you can see that starting to put a little chisel tip on the end of the pencil and a little chisel tip for blending I actually quite uh, like it. it works for me because if I went for a sharp side so if I've turned it over and gone for a sharp side I've got a bit more I've got lines that I, I don't want it's creating lines so by going to the chisel side I can't really do that now because I've just created a um, a sharp point again on it but it's just uh, I find a slight little chisel tip helps to disguise those little circles so hopefully that will help um, they're the sort of strokes that I'm going to be using throughout this um, tutorial I've put down a little bit of the ochre, I've forgotten where I am now, put down a bit of the ochre and I'm just going to just put a little bit of the sienna down in this, burnt sienna down in this corner to just define this corner um, and then I think we might call it a day for this, uh, this part, I've been going about an hour so um, and also you, you just I've just said I, I go the one way and you've seen me coming in this way that's because I'm working from the middle there's such a lot of pigment here that I doesn't matter if I have my blunt end of my pencil in the middle there um, because there's so much pigment there anyway and actually I want the pig I want the little flicks to be on this end as they blend into the the eye so I do I do use the uh, pencil sort of both ways and then I'm going to start to put a little bit of pigment um, of the burnt sienna. Just here on the outside. And bring this, um, that's 
going to be quite dark in there. Now I wanted to sort of finish this eye really. I wanted to get this area done but I'm very conscious that it, I've already been going an hour and I don't want this video um, to be too long. So I think I am going to call it a day here for this part. We will carry on um, in part two in the next part um, just creating more definition around the eye and then we'll go into the brown part here so I am going to uh, leave it there because I think we've put a little bit of context in and um, yeah so we'll leave it there for now because I think that's been about an hour um, I hope you have enjoyed it so far um, I've probably digressed a bit by going through some of the pencil strokes but hopefully that's helped to show you what sort of um, strokes I'm going to be using throughout the rest of the um, the, the the portrait um, thank you very much for joining me uh, so far if you've liked it please do think about liking and subscribing um, to the channel um, so that other people can find uh, the tutorials uh, the parts of them and also you'll be able to get notification as to when the next um, uh, part comes up. Thanks very much for joining me like I say and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks. Bye bye